Iraq's last video was brutal. In what way? So staged, so awkward to watch. This is a real restaurant with real guests. Oh, I'm sure it is. Oh, I agree. It felt a bit odd, to say the least. Stealing tweets, deceptive editing, misleading content, questionable hiring practices, and fake strangers. These are areas of Airax content that I will examine in this video. YouTubers have evolved from faking pranks. Too bad. I don't like gold diggers. But lying about their lifestyles to scripted but authentic content. For the next two days, they'll be competing in a ruthless series of challenges for a prize that could change their life forever. And if you take a step back and look at Airax videos from an authenticity standpoint, it becomes clear that they're not as genuine as he wants you to believe. Does Airax fake videos? This question triggers me. You can count on me to not fake videos, unlike almost every other creator on the platform. For example, in his video, I expose strangers lying in public. Nothing about it feels like real life. Maybe it's because of the over-the-top editing. It's me, Hot Patrol! Oh, he's so nervous, bro! The over-exaggerated reactions in his director-style setting. Oh, yeah. Or how the random strangers who appear in his videos don't seem so random. Did you pick, did you learn the pick Latin? Like this guy, for example, Tate Doppler. In this video, Eric posted a job posting for General Marketer. Now maybe Tate, who is an actor, happened to be browsing LinkedIn, saw the job posting and thought, yeah, I'll transition careers from acting to marketing. Or Eric hired him because he's a young, good looking guy who would be perfect for one of his videos. Would you expect someone who thinks he's in a real job interview to perform CPR like this? First thing I would do would be this. <laughs> After all, Eric describes these candidates as real people, which is technically true, but it's hard to believe that they're real strangers. Some brief background. Eric Decker, known as Eric, took YouTube by storm a few years ago, gaining subscribers at an astonishing rate. He went from a couple hundred subscribers to 10 million in just over three years, which is extraordinarily rare. His rise on the platform came from his unwavering determination and his creativity. His sneaking in series was a huge hit and was the main catalyst for gaining traction on the platform. It's been clear since early on that Eric values numbers. He stranded himself on an island claiming he was willing to die there until he hit 1 million subscribers. Or I will die on this island. I'm literally not leaving until we hit a million. Even though the island was literally just off the coast of Florida. He took his growth to the next level by cleverly collaborating with prominent YouTubers in original ways. Everything up to this point has been entertaining and more importantly, appears to be real which is why his rise resonated with so many people. But with more views and subscribers came more focus on retention. We've heard of the Mr. Beastification of YouTube. Well, Eric has taken that to the extreme. His videos became more fast paced with each upload. And literally within five minutes, there was a paparazzi waiting outside. How are you doing today? Can I ask you a couple questions? I need to ask you something. How big is your girl? Yeah, are you dating Ariana Grande? <sighs> it has certainly paid off for him, now sitting at 14 million subscribers. Even Jimmy himself sees huge growth potential in Eric. Like, I think Eric shares that same, like, just almost dumb, right? Like, you have enough money where you just don't have to work anymore, but you keep going because you... I think he's the next person to get 100 million subscribers. But with great clout comes great deceit. Here's a viral tweet from a random person about Uber's helicopter being the cheapest option. And here's Eric's tweet of the exact same screenshot. And then him taking it even further and taking a picture from the Uber helicopter. In reality, he probably saw Nicole's viral tweet and thought, I can take this and make content out of it. Or it was a brand deal with Uber. Uber probably paid you to reshare an old post to give the new copter clout. Please don't sell out, dude. I was starting to like your shit. Another example of this weird and misleading behavior is this tweet in which he claims someone found his address and sent him 5,000 pizzas. Not a single grease stain on any of them. You likely just bought a load of empty boxes and staged a photo for online clout. This seems like a good possibility. Either that or it's another brand deal, this time with Pizza Hut, who he's collaborated with a lot in his content. And Eric replied to James with this, indicating that he's missing the joke. But as James refutes, there's really no joke here. Just a sad attempt to get views and attention. I dug a little deeper, and it turns out blatantly stealing tweets and trying to pass them off as his own is normal for him. He actually tries to convince his followers that they're original. Like this burnt pizza one he stole from Reddit where he asks his followers to remind him to take his pizza out of the oven, then pretends he accidentally burnt it. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! 
You could look at this bizarre behavior by Eric and chalk it up to him simply trying to gain viewers and fans. These white lies may seem harmless, but they show that he's willing to fake content for views on Twitter. But that type of behavior has been prevalent in his YouTube videos for the past year plus. Anytime strangers are involved, it reeks of being staged. We've seen YouTubers in the past busted for hiring actors off Craigslist. Hey, I'm Shane Barbera. I was in FoozyTube's uh, Uber prank. Um, it's fake. <laughs> Uber! Ow! Uber! Woo! Road trip! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> What's up, homie? Uber! Dude, this isn't the f***ing McDonald's playpen, man. Get out of my car. Let's go! But we've evolved, and Eric wouldn't be dumb enough to do that. Instead, he hires them off of a website called Backstage. Now, he allegedly only uses this method for videos not involving strangers, but when looking at some of his job postings, like this one, he's hiring a wide variety of people. It's certainly not out of the question that some of them could be playing the role of strangers. Here's another job description. This one states, all husbands involved would get their Instagram handles shouted out on screen. Now, if you're a 22-year-old guy living in LA and trying to become an influencer, this looks like a great opportunity. You get to be in a massive YouTuber's video, which will garner millions of views, and your IG handle will be shown to the world. Plus, you'll get paid 75 bucks. Here's the dating video for the job posting. 100 dates in 24 hours. Megan's job before the end of the day is to eliminate everyone until she's found her perfect husband. If you're one of these inspiring influencers who is lucky enough to be hired for this video, wouldn't you be incentivized to stand out and do something crazy to increase your chances of getting screen time? I vow to make you laugh and giggle and make them cheese clack and jiggle. That in itself presents a problem of fake behavior by these hired people. Oddly though, Eric claims these 100 people are his subscribers. So all these guys are actually, you guys, these are my subscribers. That's a cheap ploy to subconsciously encourage viewers to subscribe on the off chance they'll one day randomly get to be in a video. Spoiler, you won't. Now, his videos don't appear to be scripted word for word, but they are slimy and fake in their own way. Here's a Reddit thread with some insight. All the videos of Eric are super predictable, and whatever a character does, it clearly shows that he was supposed to do this, so that the video could be entertaining. I've been in three Eric videos, and it's definitely not scripted, but if something funny happens, they do like a redo for the cameras and stuff, so it may seem less authentic. Including an authentic, humorous moment in the video is one thing, but asking them to redo it is asking them to act. I had a friend who wound up in an Eric video in early 2021. They fed him a couple lines and changed the story a little bit to make it seem more dramatic. Made me look at his latest videos in a different light. I think that's likely how a lot of others feel now. Also, he has a sketchy and expensive online course called Creator Now, which is intended to teach aspiring creators how to succeed. But the anecdotes are not good. Every creator eventually has to evolve his or her content. Sticking with the same thing and refusing to adapt will almost always result in a decline in viewers. The challenge genre, especially ones involving strangers, on YouTube is blurry, because similar to pranks, we the viewer have no way of knowing if they're real. We can gain trust and admiration for creators, but there's nothing stopping people like Eric from cutting corners for more eyeballs. The sad thing is that he has a very young audience, who is not cerebral or cognizant enough to spot inauthenticity when they see it. So to answer the question in the title of this video, that comes down to how you define fake. It's evident that Eric hires people to be in his videos, which means that it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that the strangers in his videos are not actual strangers. I've invited 25 strangers into my house, but what they don't know is for the next two days they'll be competing. And that Eric himself can manipulate and influence the behavior of these participants to make the video more entertaining. Eric's YouTube channel and social media presence will likely continue growing for the next several years. But unfortunately, it seems that his fame has dictated his content direction, appeasing the algorithm and governing his editing style for maximum retention. But sacrificing his integrity doesn't seem to bother Eric, as long as those numbers keep going up.